Hello and welcome to our fifth and final video in the Victorian Days series. I'm Audra and I'll be your host today. A very Victorian Halloween will start out by talking about the history of the holiday and then move into how the Victorians specifically celebrated. The holiday that we now celebrate as Halloween was originally the Celtic festival of Samhain. The Celts are an ancient people who lived throughout most of Europe. They celebrated their new year um, on November 1st. And the new year for them was also the first, the beginning of winter. So Samhain was a time when they would gather their people together and gather their animals in from the summer pastures. They would start making shelters for the winter. They would tell stories, they would make new laws, they would have feasts and bonfires, and there was also a religious aspect to this holiday too. So the beginning of winter marked the beginning of a dark and dangerous and scary time for the Celtic people, so they would sacrifice to their gods, often crops, possibly animals, and they also believed that the barriers between the natural world and the supernatural world were broken during Samhain. This meant that fairies would cast their spells, this meant that the dead could come back to earth and tell the future, and this also meant that the spirits would make mischief. So this could be a dangerous time for the Celtic people too. Then later on, the Celtic traditions were absorbed into the Christian tradition. So that meant that Samhain became All Saints Day on November 1st. This was a day for all of the saints who didn't have their own specific holidays. Later that was added on to, and we got All Souls Day on November 2nd, a time for people to pray for their departed loved ones. People would set out food for their loved ones, sort of like they, how they used to sacrifice to the gods, and they would also leave lights burning at their homes so that the ghosts could find their way back home. Um, Halloween came to America, as so many other things did, with immigrants. So the original settlers brought their traditions with them from England, and then later on in the 1800s, the Irish and the Scots and the Germans brought their, and lots of other, people from lots of other European countries brought their traditions and their lore with them as well. How did the Victorians celebrate Halloween? Well, there were a lot of pranks. <laughs> in the early Victorian era, most of those pranks happened in rural areas, small towns and farms, places where everyone knew everyone. In areas like that, the neighborhood grump was likely to find his rocking chair up on his roof or her pig pen open and all of her pigs fled. Pranks like that were pretty much harmless, but then as time went on, industrialization started to happen, people moved to big cities and there were big city problems like poverty, unemployment, segregation. Things that made kids want to lash out at adults and authority and rich people. So at that point, the pranks started to get more dangerous. I'll give you an example. On November 1st, 1889, the Washington Post reported that several groups of boys were running around the city, knocking on doors and then, or ringing doorbells. And then when people answered the door, the boys would throw flour in their faces. Or people would be walking by on the street and the boys would throw flour at their backs. So they'd have flour on their backs. Or, and one of the more dangerous pranks, was they would pile up stones in front of people's doors, ring the doorbell, and then when the person went to answer the door, they would trip and fall over the stones. That was something that the police stopped as often as they saw it happening, but there were still a few people who fell down and had just minor injuries. So at this point, 1889, things are starting to get more dangerous. Then in 1901, the New York Times reported two really serious pranks. So there was a group of boys that played a prank on a gentleman who lived in a house that was at the top of a flight of stone stairs. They strung a rope across the top of the stairs and made a lot of noise outside. So when this gentleman went to open the door and see what was happening, he started down the steps, tripped over the rope, fell, dislocated his shoulder and fractured his skull. Then that same night, again, November or er, Halloween of 1901, there, were a group of, there was a group of boys who was going around hitting people with sacks of flour. So this is not a polite little handful of flour. This, these were big, heavy sacks that they were hitting people with. And they hit one person in the stomach so hard that this person needed surgery. Unfortunately, the person didn't survive the surgery. 
So at this point, the late Victorian era, 1901, people were dying, and people were being seriously injured by these Halloween pranks. On a more lighthearted note, there was something called love tests, also known as trying sweethearts or trying charms, that some Victorian girls would do to try and figure out who their future husbands would be. Of course, in the Victorian era, who your husband was pretty much determined how happy you were going to be in the future, so this was something that girls were understandably anxious about. So one of these love tests was called the salt egg. This was where you would stay up late and roast an egg in the ashes of the fire. Once the egg was roasted, you would take out the yolk, and in the hole where the yolk used to be, you would fill it up with salt. Then you, at, at precisely midnight, you would eat the salt egg. And without drinking any water, you would go to bed, and you were supposed to dream of your sweetheart offering you a cup of water. If you accepted the water, you and your sweetheart were meant to be married. If you rejected the water, then you and your sweetheart would not get married, and it was likely that you would end up an old maid. Another love test was roasting nuts. So you would take two nuts, one named after you and one named after your sweetheart, and place them in the fire. If the nuts sat there in the fire quietly together, it meant that you and your sweetheart were meant to be. If you were not meant to be, the nuts would jump apart. Okay, the other love test or another love test was the apple and the mirror so presumably because it was harvest time and apples were plentiful at midnight again the witching hour you would stand in front of a mirror and eat an apple you at midnight your husband's future husband's face was supposed to show up looking over your shoulder in the mirror there was also burning a love candle which was a little bit more complicated when you were burning a love candle you would start by setting a table with food and one empty plate you would take a candle and nine new pins and stick the nine pins in the candle below the wick. The idea was that as the candle melted down, the pins would fall out one by one. At or before midnight, when the last pin fell out of the candle, your future husband's spirit was supposed to show up to the table, sit down at the empty plate, and eat dinner. And then the last, and in my opinion, the weirdest one, was you would take a mirror and a candle, and looking into the mirror, walk backwards down the cellar steps. Walking backwards down into the basement, holding a candle. What could possibly go wrong? And then your future husband's or your future sweetheart's face was supposed to show up in the mirror. And presuming that you didn't trip and break your neck and burn your house down, you would know who your future husband would be. Okay, we are not going to do an experiment today. As a matter of fact, I am begging you, do not try any of the crazy dangerous things we talked about today at home. Just go home and eat your tasty Halloween candy and be glad that we celebrate Halloween the way we do now. We hope you really enjoyed our Victorian Days video series as much as we enjoyed making it. If you'd like to learn more about life in the Victorian era, we'd love to have you schedule an appointment to come tour the McKinley Birthplace home and get a feel for what it was like to live in the Victorian era as a middle-class person. Thanks again for joining us today. We hope you have a really safe and happy Halloween, and we hope to see you soon. Bye.